Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for your comments, your notes, and your emails. I'm feeling so much better and I'm recuperating great. Thank you so much. So what I'm doing since I've been home is thinking about some of the things we can do here on the channel, some more recipes and more segments. One of the segments that I'm coming up with now starting today is called the lighter side. You know how you go to a restaurant and they have that section of the menu for those who are trying to be uh, calorie conscious, uh, fat conscious or uh, carb conscious. You're trying to watch those particular numbers. So that's what I'm doing in this particular segment. Now all I do with the recipes that we're going to be making is I just run them through a calorie counter and they're free on the internet. You can find a lot of them and you can do the same. So the four things that I'm going to be focusing on is calories, carbs, <laughs> fat, and protein. So you can get kind of those numbers and feel free to run the recipe through your own calorie counter. I'm going to try to be as exact as possible, but my goal for calories is to be under 600 calories per serving. Okay. And then you can make the decision to kind of control your um, protein or your, what you probably want to control a lot of people right now is carbs. So as we slide into spring and summer, I'm going to be having some more of these recipes for those of you who want to be a little bit more health conscious, okay? And I think that's going to be a good thing. So let's get started with our turkey, veggie, and quinoa stuffed peppers. First things first, let's get the vegetables chopped. I've already pre-chopped the zucchini and the mushrooms and the onions. Now I'm just showing you how you want to attack the eggplant. Just want to shave off some of the outer skin of the eggplant. You can leave some of it on because it is edible. And then you just want to cut it into small cubes. When you're preparing a recipe like this that calls for this many different types of vegetables, you want to cut them up in uniform pieces. For this particular recipe, we're going with those half inch size cubes. And then for the Swiss chard, we're also going to give it a rough dice. And we're doing this because we want to make sure that all of the vegetables cook evenly during the cooking time. I wanted to include a dark leafy green in this particular recipe and so I decided to switch up from the standard spinach and grab the rainbow swiss chard. Now rainbow swiss chard is high in vitamins K, A and C, also iron and dietary fiber and it worked out really well. Now we're going to move on and go ahead and cook off our ground turkey, our very lean ground turkey. I went in with some extra virgin olive oil, about one and a half to two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and then I'm just going to brown the turkey off. And this really isn't even a pound. This is about three quarters of a pound. Next I'm going to add some of the chopped garlic and I'm going to reserve the remaining garlic for when we saute the vegetables. Then we're going to add some Grand Diamond all-purpose seasoning which can be found at gdseasoning.com. And we're just going to continue to cook the turkey until it's fully cooked. So I wanted to show you the quinoa up close and personal. These small little red seeds is the quinoa, high in protein. One of the reasons why I pulled back on some of the turkey because the quinoa offers a lot of protein. And I'm going to cook it in some low sodium chicken broth. So while that's coming up to a boil, our ground turkey is finished. And I'm just going to take that and put it on a plate to rest while we get the vegetables sauteed. So now that the quinoa has come up to a boil, we're going to turn the heat down and put a lid on it and let that continue to cook. It sort of handles like rice. So now back into the pan, I poured about a tablespoon of olive oil and I added the red onions. And then right after that, I'm going to go ahead and add the chopped zucchini and the chopped eggplant. And then I'm just going to go ahead and follow that up with the cremini mushrooms. So now in this instance we have two very absorbent vegetables in this recipe the mushrooms and the eggplant they have managed already if you look at the pan to absorb all of the olive oil that's in the pan so now what you have to do is go ahead and give the pan a little bit more extra virgin olive oil so that the vegetables can continue to cook and brown i went ahead and took the opportunity to go ahead and season the vegetables because we're also going to be adding the swiss chard in there so that was enough seasoning for this coming Swiss chard. And then look at the pan. See how dry it is? So I added about two more tablespoons of olive oil to go ahead and get the pan nice and uh, oiled up again. But not too much because remember, I can't put the garlic in the pan like that when it's dry. Otherwise, the garlic is going to burn. 
Don't worry, the total recipe calls for about five tablespoons of olive oil, period. So we have enough olive oil in the pan now, and it's enough to go ahead and accommodate both the garlic and the Swiss chard. So then we're just gonna go ahead and stir the Swiss chard around until it wilts. Now for those of you who are gonna be trying quinoa for the very first time, um, maybe via this recipe or some other recipes, this is a great way to do it because it is surrounded by familiar vegetables and a familiar protein. It's not so harsh of an introduction like if you were trying to eat a quinoa salad, maybe with some grilled vegetables. I think this is a great way to give it a try. So the quinoa is all done. We're just gonna take a fork and we're just gonna fluff it up. And you see the quinoa, the seeds that we started with, once the cooking process is over, the inside just kinda curls outward. And then you're just gonna go ahead and add it to your vegetables and your ground turkey. And by the way, there are other colors of quinoa, like a yellow. They also have a color darker than this red particular quinoa. Um, they also come in black, I do believe. Once the mixture is thoroughly mixed, you're gonna go ahead and start cutting on your bell peppers. Now, I just grabbed all of the beautiful colors that were available. Those red ones were on sale, as you can see, because the shape is kind of sloped, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I was going to cut them this particular way anyway. So you can either use a knife or a spoon to go ahead and remove all the seeds and the ribs from the inside of each pepper. Now here's one of the main reasons why I buy cookware that not only can be used on the top of the stove, but also can be used in the oven. So what I did was I just stuffed my peppers right there in the same pan that I cooked the vegetables and the turkey in. And as I stuffed them, I made room for them right there directly in the pan. I'm always trying to seek out new ways to save up on that cleanup time. You're gonna have enough of the meat mixture along with the vegetables and the quinoa to be able to fill eight large bell peppers. Now that our peppers are all stuffed, we're just gonna take a large piece of aluminum foil to cover the pan, and that's gonna help create steam so that the pepper can cook to the desired tenderness. Now I'm gonna go with 400 degrees for about 35 minutes. So here are the nutrition stats per serving. 384 calories, 30 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fat, and 21 grams of protein. The peppers come out of the oven. All you really have to do at this point is go ahead and eat them just like this. But what I included in the nutrition stats was a couple of tablespoons of a vegetarian marinara sauce that can go over each pepper. Also, I calculated a couple of tablespoons of a low-fat cheese or a cheese of your choice. Just try to keep it under two tablespoons. And then just put that back in the oven for the cheese to melt. And now you're ready to eat. The one thing I noticed about this particular recipe, this stuffed pepper, it is so moist inside. And that's because of the water content of the vegetables that we use. And the peppers also give off their moisture. Really makes for a great meal that's filling, but not too heavy. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Remember, these recipes and a whole lot more can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you guys next time.